So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ilya. Uh, most part of my career, I'm working in the area of business intelligence and data warehousing and different kinds of data integration projects. Today, I would like to introduce to you uh, one data modeling technique called Data Vault, which is specially designed for data warehousing uh, solutions. Could you please raise hands who heard about Data Vault previously? <laughs> so, let's start. Uh, before going to data wall de definitions, uh, I would like to refresh or repeat what we are expecting from good data warehousing solution. So first of all, it should be, should be subject oriented. It should address some business needs or some analytical requirements. It should calculate revenue, profit, or some sales amounts, etc. Uh, it should be integrated. Uh, it's very rare when the companies, organizations have has only one information system. Most probably you will deal with several or even tens, in some cases hundreds of data source information systems. You should be able to integrate all this data into a single data warehouse and present it in, in the single data mart or in, in multiple da data marts. And it should be enterprise-wide as well. So it should cover all the areas of analysis uh, done within the organization. It should be non-volatile. Volatile is classic of data warehousing. You, uh, when you load this data and create some reports, the historical data should not be changeable. All, all changes occur and as a new entries to the system. It should be time variant because in the source systems your data is free, frequently or not very frequently changing. In data warehouse you should be able to capture all these uh, changes either for analysis purposes or for reconciliation purposes. When, when you have some errors or problems you should be able to drag down uh, to the particular state of the data at particular date. It should be auditable. Uh, it's, uh, a must requirement for the financial institutions when you when you created some uh, when you have created some financial reports, uh, you should be able to track these uh, transactions back to the source systems and should prove how how all this information appeared in the data warehouse. Easy adapting for the changes. Data warehouses is subject for, for frequent changes. Just because yes. business requirement changes, uh, source systems also changes quite often. And uh, last but not least, of course, is performance of detailed processes and of reporting as well. Uh, what we have to, today in the data warehousing world, in the data warehousing environment, how we model them. So the most, let's say, frequent techniques are star schemas, probably the most popular modeling technique of data warehousing. All of cubes and uh, recently arrived big data, which actually, uh, let's say, not all the big data is data warehouse. Uh, here I, I mean target some particular area of big data is columnar data stores distributed over various ser uh, servers like Google BigQuery, Bigtable, uh, and similar solutions. If you look at, at all these techniques, they, they are very good in the query, in the reporting, in ad hoc analysis. You can build data marts with them, uh, and they, they will provide fast responses. But what about the uh, other questions of the data warehousing world? What about the auditability of data, historization, integration, enterprise-wide, easy to adapt? It's not so good as in analysis. As we are talking about auditability of data, for example, our star schema is collecting data and integrates data from various systems. It's cleaned and deduplicated on the way to the data mars. How we clean it, how we deduplicated it, uh, where, where this algorithm and uh, this process of transformation of data is stored. Historization of data. So you could, you could put history, previous values of, of dimensions or facts in your dimensional schema, but your performance will be slower, and it's not like obvious way how to implement it. Uh, Enterprise-wide, 
So you will not be able to put uh, information about your organization in one single table or in one single star schema. So most probably you will be, you will have more than one, and uh, they good if they are connected between each other. But most, pro most probably uh, there will be some standalone uh, data marts that are not connected between uh, each to another. Easy to adapt. Uh, it's also a questionable, uh, it's a questionable issue because uh, your star schemas or coops or, or big data tables collect uh, data from, let's say, various and multiple sources. Any changes of any piece of information in this uh, source will cause that you will have to alter your, your definition of star schema or uh, you, will, you will alter your model. And it doesn't mean that uh, people who are designing data warehouses with star schema, solo or big data, do not care about, uh, about these issues, but it means that there is no standard framework for it. it uh, it's like a gray area of data warehousing. Everyone knows how to create uh, dimensional models and star schemas. However, how data is uh, put, uh, taken from the system and consolidated in this uh, data marts, it's, uh, there are no standards. It's like everyone decides by himself, and it's a matter of uh, professionality of people. Either they will uh, assure that the data is uh, auditable, historized, enterprise-wide, and so on. Uh, data vault methodology was created particularly for this purpose, uh, to address all these issues. It was presented in Dan Linstead in uh, 2000. Now it's becoming uh, more popular because people are not satisfied with this current state of the art in data warehouse and searching for different ways uh, how to improve quality of solutions and, uh, and results. Uh, data Vault, one of this methodology, uh, I have apl applied it in one of my projects and would like to share and tell you what is this and how you, how you could use it in, in your cases. Data Vault is not a thing that will re replace all the current stuff. It just uh, fulfills uh, current techniques that you're using in data marts. Uh, all tasks of data integration Historization, cleaning, all heavy tasks of data warehousing will be done in the data vault. And your data marts uh, will be designed especially for query performance. They actually, all tasks, uh, all heavy tasks will be moved from the data marts, and data marts will be like presentation, pure presentation of data. And when uh, your business will decide that you will have another one, data marts, you in, in this paradigm, using this paradigm, you will create them in, in days, for example, in hours. If someone will drop your data by database with data marks, we will tell, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you will repopulate this data also in, in, in some day and night, for example, because uh, your transformations uh, are already done here in data vault. Uh, what is data vault, actually? Uh, data Vault is technique when we are dealing with source system and take some entities, some files, tables from the uh, sources. We split this information, classify this information into three categories. Identification, relations, and uh, description. Context. Context of information. So we will uh, put it into different uh, data structures. Why it's done? It's done, first of all, because the rate of change of this information is different, and the secondary, it's uh, interpreted differently. It's, uh, if this information is put in one table in the source system, it doesn't mean that it belongs uh, to one entity, maybe faultly designed. Uh, so we split incoming information into three categories of identification, relationship, and uh, description. Uh, but we keep all this information together, unified, because we afterwards we will need to construct facts, dimensions, aggregate. Uh, three constructions of data vault. Uh, the first one uh, called hub. Hub is identification of business entity. By business entity, we understand like customer, invoice, arrangement, everything that have meaning for the business. 
if you have some table that has no meaning for the business, it's, it's not the subject for the cup, or you should look carefully in it and find either there is something that could be referenced by people who do not know databases, SQL, etc. In Hub, we place only identif identifier of entity. In this case, it's a customer business key, some customer number, which also makes a unique key in this table. We have the load uh, date time when we acquired this record, and we have a record source, a record source from where we, uh, this record is ca where captured. The second construct of data vault is link table. Link is a pure natural relation. Can I first do you make uh, new copies every time when you no, want? No. Or it's, uh, it's updated? Yeah, it's, it's not updated. So first time when you capture the business entity, you, you make a lot of date time and you uh, put yeah, but, but the next, system. Next time when the customer data and maybe customer loss data has been modified, then you make a new record in no. this customer you, you, So hub is a unique identification of business entity. It appears once and it stays forever. Okay, so there are no additional attributes. No, okay, purely as it is. Okay. So it, uh, so. The next uh, link. Link is a relation, natural relationship between entities. So if you have customer and you have employee who's, who is account manager for this customer, you just put this relation here. Uh, the same. It's pure relation. It does not have any descriptive information about it. You, uh, you just have foreign keys to the hubs uh, which link, link is connecting. You have low data time date when you first identify this uh, relation and record source when you, where you firstly identified this uh, relation in which information system. Uh, one another thing about links, they are by default treated as many-to-many -many relationships. So if you have in your source system some uh, one-to-many foreign key from one table of another, afterwards business will decide no, there will be several people who are serving the same uh, customer several employees, you will have a trouble, let's say, if, you, if in your source system just to re redesign it to, to make it work. In data world, we, we just prepare it for this systemation and we actually don't care how many people serve uh, one customer. And the third construct of uh, data world is satellite. Satellite is a place where you put all, all the description, uh, descriptive information in, uh, from the source system. So, we have, uh, in satellite, we have reference either to hub or to link, just to make uh, sense if uh, this description is about entity or about relationship. Uh, and then we have all uh, attributes uh, of, uh, of entity or relationship itself. As well, we have uh, date when we have loaded this information and we have record source, uh, or source where we acquire this information. And here in satellites, we are making logging all the changes made to, uh, to, to the information from the source system. So if customer name has changed, we acquire new record, put it with a uh, new load date time, and we have new version of, uh, of, of yeah. name. Just one word, this load date time will be the same for uh, no. one uh, upload, or if uh, we are loading data, maybe during the load, the data are uh, changing uh, in the source system. Let's say it's uh, it up, up to you. Yeah, but, but uh, I would put the date of the session of law here, not, uh, let's say, start of the session. But it's, it's not so strict uh, condition for it. Uh, so when you have new name for the customer, you put new records. These two fields, load date time and customer ID, makes a primary key of the satellite table. At any moment of time, you have only valid record uh, which is uh, identifying uh, the customer. Some small example of this decomposition. I have taken some simple entity of customer from the source system. We have customer code, something by which customer is referenced. We have uh, the name and uh, surname of the customer, personal ID, some classification information about customer date uh, of birth, date when customer be became a customer, residency. We have one foreign key, uh, which is uh, account manager ID. That person who's serving uh, this particular customer. And I have one attribute balance. So let it be some outstanding amount of, of, of deals of, of this customer. 
we, we see that we have identification, we have relation, and we have uh, description. And uh, all this information put into different entities. We have customer hub with just identification. We have relation. We have extracted it and put in this uh, in the different table. Uh, customer employee link. Employee hub is not like probably it will be loaded in, in some different session, but it's uh, it's presented here as well. Uh, then we have split descriptive information. In this particular moment, I just split it. Uh, there is no single rule, let's say, how to how to you will split information by satellites. I will explain it later. But in this case, I put balance in the separate table. And why I have done this? Because uh, it's uh, to deal with such uh, situation called data explosion. Balance is something that will change very frequent, actually every day for every customer. If you just put it in some stage table, which is uh, not one-to-one -one to the source, and you will monitor changes of balances each day, if you have some several million customers, after one year this table, you could, uh, let's say, calculate <laughs> how big it, it will be, and it actually you will not be able to work with it. So we are isolating this one highly frequently changing attribute and put it in the balance satellite. And I have created two more satellites, which is one is identification of the customer, all attributes that identifies it, and one for profiling the customer. Uh, this may help me further when I, uh, when I would like to add something new. Let's say this structure uh, is, uh, okay, we'll describe it a bit later. Uh, one of the things that you already may notice is zero updated. So there is no any single place we, when, where we have updating information. There is no detail day two field. Yeah? So if a new customer appears, new record here. Customer change uh, uh, employee, new record here. Uh, balance changing, new record here. Some of these attribute changes, also new record. So uh, it's zero updatable data warehouse structure. And uh, I just put, just for your convenience, you could support with this structure, for example, real-time incoming data. It's also just uh, one of the techniques that you split your information by rate of change. So you could create new one satellite, which is populated one in, once in a minute, for example. You are just incoming stream of transaction or of information, and you just put it in the satellite or, or in a separate, separate link. Isolation of structural changes. Let's say if, you, uh, if I will add new uh, foreign key in this construct, let it be a branch or location where all papers regarding this particular customer are physically stored. It's new foreign key here. What's going uh, up here? I will just create one new link between customer and, and uh, location or organization unit. All other structure stays unchanged. All my reports, all my data maps will work as it was designed. However, I have introduced new data element. Uh, here is one small uh, example of data wall structure. I have customer hub as before. I have employee and have relationship. That is that is was modeled in the previous slide. In addition, I have some sales hub which identifies the sales element. What is what I am particularly sold sales item and how I just classified these sales for myself. So how I named it is a, as a product, for example. I, I didn't put a lot of satellites here. It's like skeleton of, of your data warehouse, which is quite uh, depending, depending on the business, or just dry, driven by, by the business side uh, of the data warehouse. And satellites, you could add them as you wish. Uh, when you wish and where you wish. Uh, how all these things, stuff, uh, contributes to ag uh, agility and incremental build of your data warehouse. Uh, first of all, you could start model your data warehouse even if you do not know the full scope of the project and if you do not know, let's say, industry very well. You have simple design rules of hubs, links, and satellites. When you notify, no start to analyze your subject area, you just create template of your data warehouse, put some hubs, put some links, 
you even could postpone the definition of satellites and what attributes uh, will be available in data warehouse, and you could start build your incrementally your solution. Another one point, when you already design it all your data warehouse, most probably next day uh, when you just deliver the project, they will be required to do some changes in it. So the, there will be new information in the source system, source system or business will decide to restructure or change the grain of analysis, for example. And then when you updating your data world, in most cases you will just create new items. You will not update existing <coughs> items. Uh, it's ex except satellites maybe, but you also could handle this satellite situation when you just new source system with brand new data, you could put all this data into a separate satellite. And uh, you will deal with it, with it later, start to capture changes, and then uh, redesign your data mass when, when required. Uh, so the main feature of data vault architecture is that in most cases you will not up, uh, update structure of, of, of your data warehouse when, when you're changing the requirements. Uh, just some small example of these uh, new features. This, the same uh, diagram as before, sales, uh, hub, customer hub, some uh, product, business decided that Okay, you well, let it be bank, for example. Yeah, so it decided that it's not we we just not serve the single customers. We would like to serve families. We would like to introduce family, or uh, if they are legal entities, group of legal entities, just for cross sales and up sales uh, purposes. What we will do? We just add additional link, which connects two or more, uh, or 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 a hierarchy of customers that will tell us that these two particular customers belongs, well, let's say, to the family. Uh, we just added new satellite, nothing changed uh, in our structure. Another one case, uh, we, we just have recorded in our data warehouse uh, sales facts. But then business decided, so let's also analyze quotations, not particular sales, but before sales process, that we offered something to customer, we would like to know uh, how our offers convert to the sales revenue. We have customer sale link, uh, link between customer and particular sales arrangement, and we just adding new satellite with the attribute life cycle status code and life status, uh, life cycle stat status date, which states either it's actual sale or it's just a quotation. We just uh, added new element, but we didn't change anything. Uh, about satellites, yeah? Uh, satellite is a part of your of, of that world construct that uh, it's up to you how you will design them, actually. Uh, the, mo the three popul popular rules of design of satellites split them by data source. It's very good for traceability, for auditability of data. So you have just one, you, if you have customer information from three sources, you could create three tables that holds uh, practically the same, but it most probably different information from sources. You could split satellites by co uh, context. So like addresses in one place, uh, identification in another satellite. It will help you in readability of your model. So it's, if you would look to for name of the customers, you, you certainly will know what, what table, in what table it will be stored. And it helps to isolate changes of your model uh, by rate of change. As I showed before, just to have, uh, not to have problems with data explosions or with some real-time data streams, you put frequently changing information into se separate construct. Or you could combine them together. In another one case, you could create data warehouse where uh, every new attribute is stored in the separate satellite. Probably you will have the problems uh, of querying uh, <laughs> that, that data from such structure. But for example, if you are querying data from some stream, uh, which changes of it are not predictable by you, you just loading some information about you, and nobody notifies you that uh, something is changed in it. 
you should be able to, to deal with this installation. So you could create some kind of automated ETL process. You just identify attributes, check if this attribute, if you have satellite for such as attribute, okay, put new record. If you don't have satellite for attribute, you uh, create it and start to populate. Uh, cleaning, deduplicating, integrating data in data vault. So uh, data vault architecture states that you should be able to track all the changes you have made to the data. You should be, uh, your data should be auditable. Uh, it means that you, your data vault construct is not only capturing data from the source, but you in the data vault construct also uh, track all the changes made to the data. If you are deduplicating customer, you just create new link which states that these two customers are new. If you have if you are cleaning the address information, you have original address satellite and you have converted address satellite uh, with cleaned data ready for analysis. And uh, if you will, uh, in data vault, usually people operate with two words, raw data vault, which means data acquired from the systems without transformations, and rule data vault is the place where you store all, all the transformations made to the data. Uh, about technical implementation. Uh, first of all, because your data vault construct, your elements of your data warehouse are quite isolated, it means you could uh, do the massive parallel load. You could populate hubs, links, satellites uh, in parallel at once, let's say. Or in some, uh, some many threads of, uh, in parallel. And it will contribute to the uh, performance of your ETL process from the sources to the data vault. Uh, retrieval of data from data vault. That vault is not designed for ad hoc analysis. So you, you, will, be, you will build the layer uh, of star schemas over the data vault. And actually, I was surprised that the retrieval of data from data vault, it's not also not a big issue, even considering that your number of tables physically in your data warehouse will be uh, significant. So we, we have seen that from one customer table, we create six or five tables and, uh, and it applies to the different stuff as well. And because the retrieval is not so problem problematic, just because we are isolating highly uh, changing data, most probably we will have only several tables which are really big and other, all other stuff, interconnections like graph-like structure of your organization would be not so big. So when you have, when you know that this table in particular is big, you just could apply different uh, retrieval uh, or change data capturing technique uh, and uh, structure your detail process accordingly. Even indexes in data walls and uh, partitioning, it's not so important, let's say. So you will have probably some several very big tables that you will have index, uh, you will be indexing or partitioning, horizontal, horizontal partitioning, not like using Oracle partitions. Uh, all other tables are quite well queried with full scans, let's say. So it's, 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 it's not, not a big problem. Uh, and again, data vault is not replacing the star schemas, hoops, or, uh, or big data tables that you will create. Some summarization of the data vault advantages over, over nothing, I would say. <laughs> because it, uh, I would say it's, no, it's nothing that replacing some other, it's just uh, replacing the gray area of, of the data warehousing world. So it's uh, good with incremental build. It's easy to adapt for changes <coughs> from the business perspective. It's out of the box framework for historization and integration of data. So you, you probably every time you are thinking in your data warehouse, how you will track the history, how you will integrate all this data. So you just have the methods that you could use uh, out of the box. Uh, there are simple design rules of hubs, relationships, links, and satellites. It means that when you start to design your data warehouse, it's uh, even if you don't uh, try to do it, but it will be business-centric because all these constructs are like from the business. You could not even just table 
just so I like this table, I will put in warehouse, but I don't know, let's say, what from the business perspective, what does it mean? In data world, all these constructs are uh, tied to the definitions in business. Uh, another one, uh, it uh, works well with graph-like structures. When you, your data warehouse is like graph, uh, when you're dealing with unstructured data, when you just create uh, attributes, satellites on the fly, uh, it it's also could help you to deal with uh, real-time data. When you put some additional satellites uh, for, for highly frequent changing data. Uh, what about the information we could find on the web about data world? So there is in data world discussion forum in LinkedIn. It's a place where all creator of the methodology and all the person who are practice, practicing it uh, meets and share experience. There is a YouTube channel Data World Academy where you can find some information, some lessons uh, about where and how to apply it. Actually, there is a certification pro program with Data World. At least I know these two companies, and to, in one of them, Genesis Academy, I, I just learned the Data World and certified in, in it uh, about the tooling with data world. So it's technique for relational databases. Everything you are using with relational databases as well works with uh, data world. It could be implemented in SQL Server, in, in Oracle. You could use any uh, SQL tool. So it's just a relational data modeling technique. And there is one tool called was <laughs> probably that states that it could create uh, from your source system take as an input your source system structure and produce data world, data world structure of the source system. But I am quite skeptical about it because you know, garbage in, garbage out. You, you have to model your data warehouse by your brains and, and find all, all the elements in the business. Um, and uh, actually, there is, it's not the one technology for such kind of modeling. There is another one called anchor modeling technique, which is quite uh, radical uh, about designing. It's always put one attribute in the, sing in the single table, and it shares the same concepts uh, of, uh, of hub, link, and satellite, but they call it different. And there is also six normal forms, so-called. So, so anchor modeling in six, in six normal form, it's actually the same. And it means just that you have one table per attribute, and you also have time slice for, for, for every value of your attribute. So probably it's all from my side. Please, any questions? Uh, in terms of um, where you store this data wall, so isn't also some? What, uh, you said that uh, these uh, satellite tables you never modify, uh, <coughs> but uh, maybe you have some. But if you, uh, in the same set of attributes, you would like to add some attributes, uh, you, you always need to create new satellite table, or sometimes you uh, modify existing tables. Or? You could update it. You could. And, uh, I was question: uh, so it, are then uh, these columnar databases better suited uh, that uh, if you just add the new columns there, yeah, so then it's as I answer, typically that's a fast operation as these columns are anyway stored uh, so, separately. Uh, columnar database, okay, of course, you, you add, uh, no, I would say the, it's not comparable, columnar databases with data wall. Data vault is the track of all changes of data. Uh, columnar database is the place where, where you just load all your data for analysis and give it to, to the customer. In case of big data, you, you have if you really have a big data, you, you just spread it into different servers. Regarding satellites, you are actually flexible. So you have new attributes. You could for a while create different satellite and start to, to, to track the changes made to the data. Later on, for the purpose of uh, beauty of your data warehouse model, you could merge them together. And, and, uh, but you are not, not in stress, let's say. In this situation, you are not in stress. Business decided, oh, from this day, I would like to track uh, this kind of data. OK, you just create a quick solution for it. And later on, when you're refactoring your data warehouse, you just merge satellites by the rules you have designed it, uh, decide, defined it for yourself.
So thank you.